Okay, let's do it. What you got? What you got this week? All right, well, we got, uh, starting off, we have this Mongoose OS kit. So Mongoose is a uh, real-time operating system that you can use with a variety of different chips, but uh, it works really well with the ESP32, and we have an ESP32 Feather. So when Mongoose wanted to get like a IoT starter kit going, we're like, hey, you know, let's let's put together an ESP32 Feather based IoT kit, and you can follow their instructions to use the Mongoose OS, which is again the real-time operating system that manages threading and your you know commands and your internet and your you know Wi-Fi and everything. Uh, it's kind of neat. They have a really cool installer. What I liked about the installer is that it has a chat program built in. Yeah, it pulls oh, in wow. Gitter, Which and while great. you're in the IDE, wow. it pulls in Gitter. So you can chat with I people think, while you're coding. Is it JavaScript-based, I want to say, the language? They have a JavaScript interpreter? Yeah, I actually didn't get that something, far. I got yeah, it up and running. Something and then like that. You know, it's High-level languages. It's high-level, but it's interesting because you know the ESP32 is really powerful, so you can, you can do a pretty advanced real-time operating system with it. Uh, so check it out. Um, this is you know, Mongoose's kit. And if you have questions, check out their Gitter channel because they're they're doing support there, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have a Arduino or Metro box. You can use it with either. You can actually use it with anything that's kind of Arduino shaped. So let me show this off. So um, it's pretty nice. What I like about this is it's simple, and uh, it has these slots in it that you can then plug a shield through. It's a kind of a low rider uh, enclosure it doesn't go um, really high and that means means it's very easy you can plug in shields so I can show that really fast um, so this is the enclosure and it snaps apart it's clear which I like it's got these sort of like, like vent holes I don't know why but it has a um, you know these mounting slots which are also really handy um, so this goes in like this and it comes with screws that you can attach to make it a more permanent connection and this just snaps on and you can see as long, you know, you can use it with a Metro or an Uno or Leonardo or pretty much anything that's Arduino shaped. And then these nice, uh, it has this really cool little button here so you can reset your board. Oh, wow. it will, it'll press the reset button for you, this little nub. And then um, it has slots for the SPI and GPIO pins. Wow. So you can just plug the shields on top like that. Uh, it's super easy. That's pretty cool. It's very compact. Yeah. I like it. This is a good case at a good price. So put it in the shop. Okay. Try it out. Next up, uh, servos. Yeah, we have this cool servo. Servos. This servo is from uh, Parallax. They had this custom made for them. So we've had these analog feedback servos for a while that give you analog positioning, uh, but they want continuous rotation. And uh, the reason you can't have them be continuous rotation is because uh, the potentiometer inside that is usually used for um, the positioning uh, control, you know, they only move to 70 degrees. Like you don't have a full rotation potentiometer. There's, that doesn't work that way. Uh, potentiometers can be multi-turn, but they can't be 360 degree. So in this case, what they did is they put in a Hall effect sensor and a little magnet on, on the wheel somewhere. And what happens is when you connect this up and you control it like a normal servo, that yellow wire will give you a pulse width that tells you what position the servo is at. So you can do your own feedback control, or if you're using it as a motor wheel, you can count the rotations or sub rotations because it gives you a full pulse width um, depending on the location. You can tell your speed. Uh, you don't have to worry about centering it because you'll you always know exactly where you are. It's like pre-calibrated. Um, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it's pretty sweet because it basically comes with an encoder on it. And so this is the servo shell. And I, uh, I kind of took it apart and to show, but this is the normal servo control. It's got a nice beefy motor um, with the gear. And then this is the AS5600 which I've heard of. It's a uh, Hall effect sensor and it con connects up through the power wires and gives you that feedback line. So if you're doing robotics, um, this will make it really easy to be like, this is, uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but all the add-ons is still cheaper than if you had to DIY this yourself. And it just works out of the box. And you know if the wheels are slipping, so like yeah. you can know if you've not moved as far as you thought, like good for position tracking, pretty important. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then there's the magnet. Oh, sorry, can I show the magnet really fast? So this is the magnet on the back. So as this rotates, this magnet twists. So that's how you know the position. It's pretty cool. Very nice. It's very, very intense. It's a retool, this whole design. Probably made by Futaba. It doesn't quite say the maker, but they tend to partner with Futaba to get their high quality servers made. Okay. And the star of the Shodan episodes, Lamar and Tony, is this. 
That's our new, new product. Ooh. We have a now a feather wing version of the AMG 8833, which is a very wow. popular thermal camera sensor. So um, this camera from Panasonic, it's uh, called the Grid Eye, and uh, you basically get eight by eight grid thermal camera. And it's not a lot of pixels, but it's enough that you can do, you know, you can see something moving. You can uh, it can get absolute temperature uh, if you want. Like I'm basically transforming it into a, a colorful image on a TFT. And because it's a feather wing, it's really easy to just plug it into your feather board and uh, get going with your thermal project. And you know, it's not gonna be 200 by 200 pixels like a, a FLIR camera, but it also doesn't cost as much. So if you can deal with having a lower resolution, uh, you might find this very handy. And uh, if you have a fast feather, you know, like a, a TNC or like an ESP32 and ESP8266, what you can do is you can um, do uh, bicubic interpolation. So even though this is still getting eight by eight data, it um, makes it look like it's more high resolution by interpolating. So, you know, you can... How far can it sense away? Yeah, let's see. It it's about 10 feet. You can see like my hand. I go to see the lights on that too. Warm. It's way too <laughs> hot. Oh, yeah, those <laughs> That's are too hot. hot. Those too hot. Not super chill. Yeah. So you can see like my hand um, going back and forth. It's 10 hertz and it can run about, um, I think it's 10 meters away. It can detect a person. And um, yeah, it, on a slower feather, oh shoot, I reset it. On a slower feather, you can only get the eight by eight pixels, but this is running a TC 3.2 feather. So you get, um, you can do up to 24 by 24. So that's what you get with eight by eight. Um, and we have this as a breakout. So if you want just as a breakout format, get that. If you're looking to use this with a feather, we put it on and put the sensor nice and centered on the feather wing. So really easy to make thermal camera projects or human detectors or motion detectors. Okay, and with that is the new products. Good work. Yay. <laughs>